Dr. Sherry Berger here, this week's Holohan's Hot Topic segment. I'm here with Dr. Melissa Holohan. Hey, doctor, what's going on in the world of critical care this week? Hi, Dr. Berger. So this week, we're actually going to be talking about, I think, a very clinically applicable study. And this study looked at the effect of the syringe and the aggregate filter when administering uh, red blood cells in cats and the effect that it had on survival of the transfused red blood cells. So certainly when we're doing canine transfusion medicine, we're administering the red blood cells typically through a syringe um, or an aggregate filter. Um, what we have found with that is we no longer use that method because there were studies to support the high risk of early loss of transfused red blood cells. And the greatest effect on short-term survival of transfused red blood cells was seen with a syringe pump and using the hemonate filter. So now the most commonly used method, in dogs at least, is gravity um, transfusions. And that's actually pretty useful for our dogs because we usually have a large volume of red blood cells that we're administering. However, that's not the case for our very small dogs and our cats. And so we're still using the syringe pump and filter method for those patients because the volumes many times are 30, you know, 20, um, and sometimes maybe 50 mils, but enough that can go in a 60 mil syringe. So this study wanted to compare the transfusion practices for feline medicine to know if they were the same or different from canine medicine. And what we know specifically about the red blood cells is that cats have smaller red blood cells than dogs. Um, and they've actually had some studies to show that these red blood cells are not only smaller, but they become stiffer when exposed to hypoxemia. And obviously in storage, there's gonna be a lack of oxygen there. So that would be a hypoxic environment. When they looked at the red blood cell differences, the feline mean um, cell volume was about 40 to 55, and the canine mean cell volume was about 55 to 65. So certainly a clear size difference there. And theoretically, we would think that probably less chances of damage if we're using a syringe pump. So looking at the differences between the feline and canine red blood cells, the other thing that we note is that because the feline transfusion is a smaller volume, than the canine transfusions, we have slower transfusion rates. And although in human medicine, it's been proven that the slower the transfusion rate, the more damage that may be done to the red cells, this has not been shown in cats or dogs to this point. So the objective of this study was to assess the effect of transfusion um, of autogallus auto feline red blood cells using the syringe and the microaggregate filter. So these were red blood cells that were um, taken from the same cat and transfused back to that same cat. Specifically, they looked at the short-term survival rate in those cats, as well as the circulating T half-life. This was a prospective study. They looked at six healthy cats in the University Veterinary Teaching Hospital setting. And the interventions were to measure um, blood collected from the jugular vein and placed in an anticoagulant solution. The transfusion, again, was of the same red blood cells back to that cat using two different methods, the gravity flow, which again is the most common used in dogs, and the pump delivery method, which was using a 20 mil syringe, an 18 uh, microaggregate filter, and a syringe pump. And in this particular study, they used the Baxter syringe pumps. Blood was then collected every two hours for the first 12 hours of the transfusion, and then once a week for six weeks to assess the circulating half-life of the red blood cells. The cell survival was assessed using flow cytometry, and then the proportion of transfused cells was also measured. During the study, they um, did a bio, um, biotin-labeled mechanism of the red blood cells so that they could determine what the red blood cell life was and what the T, T half-life was. And so initially they looked at all of the cats in both groups over the course of the entire six week period to show that the biotin labeled red blood cells were still appearing um, from week one to week six. Then once they had proven that the biotin label had worked, they looked at splitting the two groups up in between the method of gravity versus the method of syringe administration. And there was significant decrease in red blood cells over six weeks, as we would expect any transfused red blood cell to be. Um, however, there was no difference in the red blood cell survival at 12 hours post-transfusion in either group. And there's no difference in survival between the two groups, gravity versus syringe, at six weeks. <laughs> 
the average half-life of the labeled red blood cells was 23 days. This is compared to about 29 to 39 days um, in other transfusion studies um, where they were using the same um, transfusion mechanisms. So in contrast to dogs, what this study concluded was that transfusion of feline red blood cells using the syringe and the microaggregate filter um, does not significantly impact the short or long-term survival of transfused red blood cells um, and therefore is a very um, useful method in cats when administering uh, red blood cell transfusions. So this is certainly a method that we use in our hospital on a daily basis and although there has been some differences looking at the distance of the IV line when we're doing feline transfusions what we have found is there are IV lines that you can get that are short IV lines for cats, so you minimize the amount of blood that's sitting in the line. Um, and so therefore, we use a short IV line hooked up to the syringe pump, and we do use the Baxter syringe pumps with the microaggregate aggregate filter um, to administer our red blood cells. And that's an, another reason for that, not only with this study, is that it's very difficult to take a 20 or 30 mil um, blood transfusion and get it to um, gravity um, administer over time. A lot of times that's very finicky and the timing of that can be um, difficult and you want to try to get that transfusion over four hours. So I think this is a very nicely done study um, and certainly supports our standard of practice to date. And that's all this week on Hallahan's Hot Topics.